If you think that SEO alone is gonna get you to the top of the Google search results page, you're dead wrong. Isn't that right, Ivan? I'm gonna show you some not so SEO tools that you have to be using in 2024 if you wanna increase those Google rankings. And by the way, they're free. You know, first and foremost, this is, you're gonna see this on every single SEO tool list, article and video. So I might as well mention it first. Uh, and that's free keyword research tools. There is a ton of them out there. Uh, you have the Ahrefs is a pretty good one. I mean, this is one of the top paid tools anyway. Uh, you can get this for free. I'll link everything in the description. But this is one of the ones that I use. Then you can also use Ubersuggest. Uh, this is one that I actually pay for now. Uh, but you should have, you know, a few searches per day, which, you know, it's pretty good. You get some searches, you get some keyword suggestions and guys, I'm not going to spend too long on the keyword tools cause that's, that's been talked about at nauseum. So another tool is called spy foo, uh, maybe lesser known, but it's still a very, uh, good tool. Uh, let's say, oh boy. Plug in something like this. Um, it's a great, you know, these are all great starting points, right? Uh, gives you monthly volume. It gives you estimated clicks. It gives you some competitive uh, analysis and other keyword suggestions. So this one is pretty good. But I still, I, I think that the best tool is the Google Keywords Planner. Uh, and that one is also free. The, you know, let me... You know, the great thing about this tool is it's straight from the source. And when I was starting out, I was using this almost exclusively. And this tool would essentially veto all of my other tools. So I would I would compile data from every search tool that I can find. Uh, but in the end, this one is the one that kind of trumped everything else. Uh, looking at, you know, the three month change, you guys, you know, you've seen this. So this is kind of basic rudimentary knowledge. Uh, but this is what I used to go by. And, you know, these are the these are the the ones with low volume, high three months change, you got to take a chance on some of them are going to hit some aren't. Uh, it's just the way of the game. Next super important tool is a headline analyzer. So if you just Google headline analyzer, you can, I mean, there's a bunch of free ones out there. And this is super important for increasing your CTR, your click through rate, and to make sure that you have a title that is catchy and attractive. It's a great starting point for you to learn how to build uh, H1 tags, titles, things of that sort. Uh, I use the one by Monster Insights and I'll show you why. So I have two examples. Say we plug in our title, it's going to give you a score. And that score, for them, they have a science behind it. You want to get as close to 100 clearly as you can, and it's going to tell you, you know, where you fall short. Uh, you want to add more uncommon words, you want to add emotional words, and you want to add power words. This tool is invaluable because it really helps you build titles that people want to click on, which is the two most important things that you want is people to click and then convert them in the blog or the service page. So that's super important. Uh, so I've been using this for quite some time and it shows you at the bottom a bunch of words that you can use and you know, they give you suggestions and it's a long list of words. It's a great way to build. Uh, and you know, a lot of, you know, these headline analyzer tools, they're built into a lot of tools on websites like Shopify and WordPress already, um, but it's a great thing to come to. So let's say we add some of these power words and some of these emotional words, and now we got a good score. So I would really recommend using this to learn how to build really good and catchy titles. Ah, happy Friday, everyone. And once you have this, the next tool that you should want to use is a pixel length checker. So this is essentially how the title is going to look in search engines. I'll show you an example of what not to do. <clears throat> Here are two examples of titles that are just too long. And you'll see the dot 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 here and the dot 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 there, you want to be able to condense it. And that's why these aren't ranking as high as some of the other ones that are short 
and they fit they fit the pixel length okay so that's essentially all it's doing if you scroll down you put in your page title and it's going to show you whether your pixel length is a okay or not and it'll show you a little preview if you keep going then you know after you hit a certain amount of pixels so i'm guessing this one is around you know if you hit the 580 mark 582 looks like the cutoff so that's where you want to be it's important right these things there's a reason they build these tools you want to have an attractive headline and you want to have a headline that fits and is congruent with what Google's structure is on the front end. So that's very important. It's a great tool. The next tool is a keyword density checker. Uh, this is kind of pseudo appears on every SEO content kind of checker. Um, if you're building a blog in WordPress or, you know, a bunch of tools that are integrated into blog builders, uh, they're kind of be going to they're going to be looking at uh, your keyword density. But it's a great way to do a few things is to see what your competitors are doing for a particular blog. So you can do it in one of two ways. You can either go in and submit the link or you can have a text input. So if you have a word file that you're working on, copy and paste it in there. And you should be good to go. Otherwise, you can use a link. And after you confirm you're not a robot, hopefully no one watching is a robot, you give it a second. And you're going to see all the keywords. So if you're monitoring, uh, if you're <clears throat> kind of looking at what a competitor is doing, you can see how many times they use a keyword. And maybe there's opportunities there that you'll find that you can optimize and also optimize it for your own content. So we see here digital marketing frequency nine times, uh, digital marketing tools, uh, so on and so forth. And it shows you the density. Uh, sometimes it'll flag it if it looks like you're overusing the word. That's also a thing that Google's very good at identifying if you're keyword stuffing. That's not good. So great tool. You know, these are all tools that are just kind of piecing a perfect content piece together. Another tool for high performing SEO pages is, you know, obviously stock imagery, which you can find for free, but even more important is infographics. Infographics I found on so many of my articles are extremely beneficial for Google and for the reader, which is, it's one in the same. If you can benefit the searcher, you're going to benefit Google because that's all Google is trying to do. And if you understand that, that's a strategy that's going to take you a long way. One of the tools I found was V-I-S-M-E, Vizme. I don't know, it sounds like a Russian guy saying with me. Vizme, you Vizme? Anyways, this is a place where you can build infographics. They have a bunch of templates and they have free downloads. So, you know, you can adjust any of the colors, you can adjust the text, you can adjust the icons, you can even upload your own photos into this app to make it unique customize it however you want and you can download it uh, if there is a limit to these downloads i'm not sure i make my own infographics but this is a great tool if there are download limits you can get yourself a screenshot taker uh, this is a screenshot uh, you can take several screenshots and put uh, them together if you're out of downloads, let's say I haven't hit that level yet But if you do just in case this is a great tool you need to have visuals uh, That's the one big killer of Blogs blogs that have no imagery in it. They have no helpful images. That's a huge huge piece very valuable to this and the last tool is a JPEG compressor I use Compress JPG, JPEG, simple enough to find. Uh, you don't want to overload, you know, if you're using images, which you absolutely should be, you don't want to overload those pages. You know, depending on what you're using, some websites are new. You know, I use this strategy because, you know, the server that we were sitting on when I was just starting out was very weak. And I needed to do every single thing that I can. You know, I'm not using PNGs. I'm using compressed JPEGs. You want to reduce that file size. Size It goes without saying, but this is a great tool. And all of these tools together is really what's going to, you know, it's the SEO is, is really one thing. Uh, 
all of these other aspects that people don't really think of. I mean, they do think of, but you have to put more thought into those. Not saying this as like a lesson, it's just what I've learned from my own experience and what's been successful. So thanks everybody. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Cheers, till next time.